the Kawasaki Ninja 125. Now, these kinds of motorcycles can do an awful lot, but what can't they do? Well, that's exactly what we're going to discuss in today's video. Guys and gals, we're going to jump on the lovely Ninja 125, go for a ride, and yeah, let's explore the kinds of things that you really can't do or probably shouldn't be doing on these kinds of bikes. Let's jump on, let's go. Yeah, it's true, guys. I mean, these kinds of motorcycles, Yes, they're little, but for the most part, you can pretty much do anything you need to do or anything that you would want to do on a motorcycle, you can pretty much do on a 125cc bike. The biggest issue that you're gonna have is being able to do any of those things fast. <laughs> being able to do any of those things quickly. That's the thing, 125cc motorcycles for the most part are very practical bikes in the sense that they got really, really good MPG. And for city riding, for city use, yeah, I can't complain whatsoever about at least this motorcycle anyway. But there are a few things that I would advise against doing on little motorcycles such as these. I mean, the very first thing that comes to mind is modifications. There's really, really no point in modifying, at least for performance, a 125cc motorcycle. It's really funny, isn't it? You do hear the uh, the little 125s every now and then that have got, like you can tell they're aftermarket exhaust, exhaust cans because they sound really stupid. Uh, <laughs> and you guys know what I mean. And but it doesn't add anything to the performance. There's, there's no performance mods that you can do on an Ninja 125 or 125ccs in general. Like. What's the point in mapping it? There isn't. <laughs> I mean, well, actually, I mean, I, I say that. There is a few mods, actually, that you could do. One mod that has come to mind is a gearing adjustment or a gearing change. If you change the gearing on a 125, you might be able to get a little bit more torque down low. But I don't know. I mean, your mileage may vary on that front. But for me, there is absolutely no point whatsoever in modifying 125cc motorcycles because you're not going to get anything out of it to be honest right now what has happened here oh oh no it looks like a crash oh okay they blocked the road off hmm well that kind of scuppers my plan all right well there's another way there's another way we can go that's a little bit a little bit longer But we'll get there, we'll get to where we're going. Woo! <laughs> the little 125, that could be. <laughs> All right, here we go. Should be back on track in a moment for I wanted to go for today's video. All right, so where were we? Yeah, modifying, modifying. There's no point remapping it. There's no point in, <laughs> in, I don't know, pretty much anything. Uh, of course, things like aesthetic mods, you know, go for it. And if you want to change the sound of your bike, then yeah, putting on a new exhaust can might just do the trick, might get that, that kind of itch scratched, so to speak. But you don't really get much out of it, at least in my opinion. Modifying other motorcycles, I can understand because, you know, whether it's performance, you get the extra performance, you get the extra torque. Whether if it's for sound, I mean, bigger motorcycles tend to sound a hell of a lot better when they've got aftermarket parts on them. So yeah, 125s, ah, I'm not so sure. So the next thing that you can't do on a 125 a CC motorcycle is wheelies. Now, there might be ways of performing wheelies on these kinds of bikes. You know, maybe if you had, if you stood up on the bike and you got a, you got one foot on a, on a pillion, pillion foot peg and you heave up the handlebars, maybe, but, <laughs> or again, like I mentioned earlier, having a gearing change, if you specifically want to be able to do wheelies, then yeah, you'll probably be able to get a gearing change that is good enough to do wheelies on, but you're not going to be going very fast. Uh, you know, you might be <laughs> lucky if you can get to 30 mile an hour with that kind of gearing setup, at least if you want to make wheelies really easy. Things like wheels as well, I mean, I suppose you could get bigger wheels to make things 
easier when it comes to wheelies but on a stock 125cc motorcycle doing wheelies is pretty much impossible and at least for <laughs> as far as I'm aware um, you'd have to really really push it I mean, really to do wheelies like on the fly and to make them enjoyable you don't have to try very hard to get them you want a 250 cc engine at least from reference you know 250 cc at least i've seen two, uh, 250s do wheelies before but never want to fives but hey guys if there's any of you that are watching this video down in the comments and you guys do want uh, you do wheelies on 125 cc motorcycles then definitely let me know <laughs> but, yeah, wheelies, that's a tough one. You pretty much can't do wheelies on a Ninja 125 anyway, but I'm pretty sure across the board. So really, the one thing that you are going to struggle with the most on a 125cc motorcycle is keeping up with traffic. Now, when it comes to city riding and suburban riding, you will have no problems with this whatsoever. But on roads like these, country roads, hilly roads, things like that, you're going to find it very, very difficult to keep up with traffic. And I mean, I've had it before, even on this bike, where I've had queues behind me because I've been trying to get up a hill. I mean, luckily around here, the hills aren't too bad, but and they don't last for too long. But you can imagine how hard it can be. I mean, I think we're going to be coming up to a hill at some point during this little ride here. But God, this is a bit mad, isn't it? Oh, they've changed they've changed the road layout here as well. Wow, they're adding lots of mini roundabouts around here. Crazy, okay. Well, that's very interesting. Getting rid of crossroads and putting mini roundabout systems instead. Oh, curious, very curious. Well, we'll see how, how those new road systems get on. I mean, that road in particular can get clogged up pretty badly from time to time. But yeah, roads like these, I mean, if, so this is a 50 mile an hour road and I mean, I'm not actually able to demonstrate this all that much at the moment because the traffic in front of me is only doing 40 but if you have someone behind you that really wants to overtake you then you know there's not really much you that you can do to actually speed up so in a lot of times unfortunately the best thing to do is actually to just pull over on a 125cc motorcycle and just let them overtake you but let them overtake you safely you know don't don't ride defensively like ride in lane one for example don't ride like this because then the person behind you may take that as like an invitation to overtake you when they probably shouldn't so always stick to lane three right here when you're riding on a 125cc motorcycle and if you have got an aggressive driver behind you then try and find somewhere safe to pull over where you can allow them to overtake you safely and everyone gets away with that incident scot free but yeah you'll find that a lot where drivers will be pinning you pretty badly and this is especially true i mean this is a 50 mile an hour road and the ninja 125 at least is pretty good on 50 mile an hour roads but it's when you get to the 60 mile an hour, hour roads is when it's uh yeah you really got to stretch its legs to <laughs> To get up to 60 miles an hour and funnily enough i mean in the near future we are actually going to have a video about whether or not this motorcycle can do 0 to 60 in the rated 13 seconds <laughs> i don't think it can but make sure to hit like get subscribed and hit that notification bell so you don't miss that video coming in the near future that's going to be a very very interesting video Okay, so I've got a couple last points for you in today's video, guys and girls. And these kinds of things are things that the motorcycle can do, but you cannot do them if you are on a provisional license, if you are a learner, as most people riding this motorcycle would be. So the very first one is pillion riding. You cannot take a pillion on the back of your 125cc motorcycle if you are on a provisional license with a CVT bit of a pain to be honest because I mean taking someone around on a 125cc motorcycle on a pillion isn't that difficult because the motorcycle itself is pretty lightweight and this Ninja 125 takes a pillion really really well 
it's just a shame that the back seat isn't actually that great though it's a teeny tiny seat i mean you you might as well have stuck a postage stamp there and expect someone to sit on it <laughs> as a pillion it's a really really tiny seat but it doesn't have pillion handles either this bike but i mean yeah when when i've taken my wife on on the back of this motorcycle it does pretty damn well to be perfectly honest with you I, I was surprised you don't get you're not that limited in power compared to if it was just you riding on your own the only real thing that changes is the weight of the bike going into corners and the braking that's pretty much it but everything else is pretty much the same which is pretty neat for a little 125 so the very last point in today's video guys and gals is right on there on that sign <laughs> m5 motorways so again if you don't have your full license you will not be able to ride you know we won't be allowed to ride a 125 cc on the motorways to be fair i wouldn't really encourage you to ride your 125 on a motorway anyway because you get quite a lot of high winds on motorways and high winds on a little bike can be just well at best really scary at worst they literally blow you off the road so yeah it's not a good idea at least from my point of view in my opinion to ride a, a little motorcycle on the motorway especially a 125 because these things are so incredibly lightweight you can flick them around you can pretty much pick them up with one hand yeah i mean people the way how people steal these bikes is by literally picking them up and carrying them away that's why it's really good to get an anchor especially for little bikes for scooters the 125s little bikes get an anchor so they cannot do that they can't physically like drag it away or pull it away because they they will you just need two people a couple people they can lift it up by the wheels and just drag it away or lift it up into a van these kinds of bikes are not very heavy whatsoever i'm seeing a lot of police around today it's mad <laughs> not that i can do anything illegal on this motorcycle either i mean that's something that you're going to really struggle to do and that's speeding <laughs> on these bikes i mean you can if you're in a 30 or a 40 but you're going to struggle speeding yeah on 50 mile an hour roads that's for sure at least uh, yeah on these on these learn illegal 125s now there's something to be said about non-learn illegal 125s and these these motorcycles are they produce more than 15 horsepower or is it 14.1 14 point something horsepower if they produce more than that they are illegal and if they're bigger than 125 cc as well they're also illegal but yeah you can get um 125 cc bikes that are not learn illegal but nowadays for the most part yeah every 125 cc is a is a learn illegal bike yeah it's an in interesting part of my riding career when I was looking to buy 125cc bike a 125cc bike rather because you don't want to fall into the trap of buying a non-learner legal 125 and there was a lot of them about before kind of like the mid 2000s damn there's loads of traffic around here yeah, anyway guys and gals we are back on track now <laughs> this, this was the road that I was uh, originally on so I'll have to keep that in mind when I'm actually on my way back. But yeah, that'll do for today's video. I mean, like I said, 125s, they can pretty much do... That's a nice R8. 125s can pretty much do anything that you need them to. Anything you need a motorcycle to do, 125s can pretty much do it. You're on two wheels, you're moving. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun on a 125cc bike. But just a few things to keep in mind if you thought you could do something on a 125 when you actually can't or at least not with a lot of effort anyway but definitely let me know your thoughts down in the comments guys and girls with how you feel about 125cc motorcycles in general you know are, are there some things that i've mentioned today that oh no, there you go more police are there some things today that you actually are able to to do on your 125cc definitely let me know down in the comment section below and of course if there's anything else that you can't do on a 125 definitely drop it in the comments as well i mean my, my wife did mention about a top box on this motorcycle you i don't think you can fit a top box on the ninja 125 but with most 125s you you can <laughs> you can fit a top box but yeah it's just something to keep in mind anyway if you do plan to have a luggage with you anyway 125 cc motorcycles you might be a little bit limited on luggage space 
and panniers and things well they're pretty much non-existent as well on 125s but yeah just a couple of cover points there just off the top of my head there for you as well guys and girls but yeah as always make sure to leave a like hit subscribe any new viewers out there welcome i hope you're all doing well let us know how you're doing let us know what motorcycles you ride and how you're finding it we'll catch you all in the next video guys and gals take care have a good one ride safe